Now let's talk about how we can utilize GraphQL queries into the Lightning Web Component. So far in the previous videos we have kind of covered all kind of GraphQL queries with the help of this Alt Air Client. That Alt Air Client is always going to be helpful for preparing the query utilizing it inside LWC. But this video we are going to talk about how you are going to utilize how to get the result and how to print the result into the lightning web component. So as usual we are going to create a new lightning web component and I'm going to say GraphQL uh, query GraphQL query. This is a simple lightning web component. We are going to expose this component. So let's quickly expose this. Let's quickly expose this and I'm going to give the name as GraphQL component because this component is going to be used for all the demos that we have seen. And then let's quickly have the targets. Let's quickly have the targets and expose it to the home page. Expose it to the home page as well as record page. I wanted to expose it to the two places home page and record page. Once you have exposed, let's quickly get back to the HTML. Have the lightning card here. Have the lightning card. Title we will say GraphQL. We'll say GraphQL. Icon name, you could use any custom icon. I'm going to say custom something custom 55. And that's it. As usual, a division tag with a class with margin tags to give the spacing all around. I will add it later. So let's first talk about let's first talk about how this how this GraphQL works in LWC. What are the modules? So there is a module called Lightning GraphQL API. That is a module called Lightning GraphQL API, which gives you two methods. One is GraphQL itself that can be used as a wire adopter that can be used as a wire adapter and that accepts the query that accepts the query so that query is going to be appended with a special keyword a special method that we get from lightning ui record api module itself that is uh, zql graphql query or graphql language okay so let's quickly go to the document first go to the document first what i did is you could also follow the same you just need to say GraphQL plus Salesforce LWC so if you search for this special keyword this keyword you will find the very first link you just need to open this link and you will be landed here in this page so as we talked about GraphQL is basically a wire adopter in lightning web component this is a method which accepts the query the GraphQL query that we have already seen and it gives you the result okay so you could see here we have got ui graphql api as a module inside lightning and these are the two methods that we have got so let's go ahead take these methods and import it i have copy paste and copied so i'm going to paste it here so we have got these two methods zql graphql language and then we have got uh, graphql as a wire adopter now let's quickly have a wire adapter here we'll say wire we'll say wire we're going to import this this is going to accept the method called graphql and as we talked about um, this graphql is going to take the query how it is going to take the query the syntax is here the syntax is here you could clearly see this is the syntax this is the syntax what is what it is it is taking an object as an input as we talked about in in the previous videos when we talked about how wire method calls an apex class so if we have to pass the parameter we have to use objects that is why it says objects and then there is a query parameter the key is going to be query and the value is going to be zql and then inside the special character that is quote tick inside this quote tick you need to pass your query you need to pass your query so let's quickly do the same we are going to use 
the object and we will say query query is the key and here we will say zql gql okay zql this is the method that we've got and then with quote tick with quote tick this character is available or uh, below the escape character below the escape key in your keyboard below the escape key okay and here you have to write the query uh, the reason we are using this uh, escape character quote tick because you could write the string in the multiple line without having additional concatenation even you could use single quotes as well but uh, using the benefit of using this quote tick is you could write the query in multiple lines because your query is actually written in multiple lines right and then that's it that's it and then it actually returns we all know that wire method either return a property or a method so we are going to write a method here we'll say wired graph keyword result as usual it is going to give us data and error data and error then you could say if there is data if there is data that means there is no error else if there is any error if there is any error we are going to do the console dot error because we wanted to see this as error if not we are going to do console.log console.log for data as of now now here you could write any graphql query that you have prepared any graphql query means any graphql query now if i go to my altair client if i go to my altair client and if i get my simple query which was maybe get contacts this is a simple query that I have. Okay. This is again, I'm getting from my history. So if you don't have this, uh, you could utilize the resources section that, that will have the query for you and then just utilize it. So let's quickly copy this query. Let's quickly copy this query and uh, get back to this uh, VS code, paste it here. So you have just pasted this query here and your graph key will the very simple query is ready to get executed your simple query is ready to get executed you could clearly see here right you could clearly see the formatting part and everything you can leave it is uh, and leave it as it is that's fine because the formatting doesn't matter okay now that's it you have developed the simple graphql query as of now there is nothing on the ui side but don't worry we'll do that but first let's go ahead and deploy this component and utilize this component in the home page of our sales application or any application where you wanted to add this component so the component is deployed to the org let's get back to our salesforce org and on the home page let's add this component after you have added the component just do the right click select inspect element select inspect or inspect element then go to console and then refresh your page so once you will refresh then you will see either a success or an error message okay so if you see in the console there is something called ui api so if you expand this you will get query then you will get contact and then you will get edges and under edges you will have node Un under edges you will have node right so each uh, like edges is an array basically edges is an array that have a node and that node had a field name like field api name dot value or field api name dot display value so if we have to access this parameter or uh, this hierarchy in our javascript how you will access you will say ua ui api dot query dot contact dot edges uiapi.query.contact.edges is going to give you the records and under edges we are going to have node right so let's quickly get back to the vs code create a variable uh, and the type of track type of track and i would say records and then let's create another variable type of tra track we would say errors 
okay so if there is any error i'm going to store this error into that variable called errors into variable called errors and if there is a data what we will say is we'll say okay this dot records equal to data dot ui api data dot ui api so say data dot ui api dot query dot your object api name which you are querying in our case it is contact dot edges this is actually going to give you the list of records this is actually going to give you the list of records now let's go ahead into the html component add a for each here so we will say template for each on top of our records we will say for item or ec and let's say for index for index we will say the value is index itself index itself and here within the template we are going to have uh, another division and this division is going to have the key this division is going to have the key value here so how we will get the key because we know that key has to be unique again let's navigate back to the browser let's navigate back to the browser so we are here we are querying we are iterating over this array array of 10 records iterating over this array so we have got node and under node we have got id under node we have got id and that record id is going to be unique so we will say okay let's go to record dot node dot id and this is going to give us the unique key and then here we could have the paragraphs or some other html syntax and what we will display what we will display here that is going to be record dot node dot name dot value why we are saying name dot value if you get back here you see you have got node dot name dot value and similarly node dot account dot name dot value node dot account dot rating dot value right so we have got this name let's say for account and for rating so we'll say node dot account dot name dot value and similarly node dot account dot rating dot value so we got it here we got this html syntax here now let's quickly add the css styling i'm going to say sls margin around laws for the top division and for the inner division here i'm going to say small instead of laws so we're just giving some spacing over here and now let's go ahead and deploy this so again to reiterate what we did is we just have looked at the outcome of ui api response that graphql response passed into the variable of a javascript and then we have uh, ran a for loop we have ran a for loop and then displayed the value one thing that we missed is to add the condition to see if there is nothing in the records so let's say we are going to say if true records that means this whole html syntax whole logic is only going to get executed if there is at least one record in the a response of our graphql and now after making the change let's deploy this again and we will see the response deployment has completed get back to your salesforce org refresh this page 